First, Daniel's technesium injection has to be made up in the hot lab. Safety clothes and radiation monitors have to be worn to protect the staff. This is where the radioactive technesium is produced, and this is what we're going to use to make up Daniel's kit for this afternoon. I'm going to use a syringe and needle to draw up the radioactive technesium, but to protect myself from the gamma rays, I'm going to insert it inside a lead syringe shield, and at the front, you can see there is lead glass so that I can see through into the syringe what I'm actually drawing up. The radioactive kit is now ready to be taken out and used to inject Daniel. The technesium is taken to the preparation room where the exact dose is carefully measured. The dose is small enough to create a good image of Daniel's heart without putting him at too much risk from the dangerous effects of radiation. I now have my dose and I'll take it to the camera in this protected lead box. Daniel. Oh, we're just going to get you ready for the scan now, Daniel. If you turn your head round that way, we're going to move the camera down. It's going to be very close to your chest, all right? But it won't move once it's in the right position. OK? In a minute, Penny's going to give you the injection, and you've got to keep still for about five minutes, OK? The camera's going to be detecting the gamma ray so that we can take pictures of your heart. As the technesium is injected into Daniel's arm, we can see it being taken up by the bloodstream, which will finally make its way to his heart. Radioactive imaging has many advantages over X-rays. A standard X-ray only produces a static image but radioactive images enable scientists to see body functions such as blood flow and even bone growth. Here we can see gamma images of two kidneys. They have revealed that one kidney is actually larger than the other. There are other types of radioactive substances used in imaging, like radiofluorine. Again, a gamma camera is used to detect the gamma rays emitted by radiofluorine. Here we have an X-ray and a radioactive image of the same hand. On the left, there's the standard X-ray, but it was the radioactive image that detected the non-cancerous growth. That's it today for Daniel. His heart has checked out fine, and was it an awful experience? Didn't feel a thing. For 30-year-old Stella, the results of medical tests were to change her life. At 29, she was diagnosed as having cancer of the cervix. Ironically, Stella owes her life to radiation, which can be deadly. Well, they first detected the cancer um, because at this visit to the GP, they did a smear test. And unfortunately, that came back positive. Um, and they then asked me to go to the hospital where they actually realized through various other tests, that it definitely was a cancer of the cervix. Um, Stella had a cancer of the cervix, which was a cancer which needs to be treated by radiotherapy. When we talk about cancer, we're talking about the uncontrolled growth of cells. Normally, there is a good balance between cells being generated and growing and cells being lost and dying. But in cancer, what happens is that balance becomes deranged and instead we get more and more cells growing and they form a lump. Radiotherapy damages all cells. It damages the nucleus of the cells and stops them dividing. But it damages cancer cells in a way that they cannot repair whilst normal cells are able to repair the damage, so that over a period of time, you can kill off the cancer cells whilst leaving the normal cells healthy. The first part of my treatment was um, a series of 28 sessions on a machine at the hospital, which is called the Linac Accelerator, and that sends out um, very high dosage of, of X-rays, um, which is 
part of the radiotherapy treatment and um, I lay down on a bed under a big machine and the machine actually sends out um, these, these x-rays. And those high energy x-rays are directed at the cancer, which is at the centre of the pelvis, and at the lymph nodes, which are at the side of the pelvis here. This high energy x-ray treatment from the linear accelerator is at about 100 times the energy of the x-rays that we use to take an ordinary x-ray picture, as you would have of your chest. And the dose which we deliver to the tumour is about 100,000 times the dose which we would use to take an ordinary picture. The only difference between x-rays and gamma rays is where they come from. Gamma rays come from the nuclear decay in a radioisotope, whereas x-rays come from a machine which works at very, very high voltages, often in the range of millions of volts. The second part of Stella's radiotherapy was her internal treatment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of anaesthetic down below so that you don't feel anything, and then I'm going to slide this tube here through the cervix and into the uterus and connect you to the treatment machine, which will put the radioactive isotope into the applicators. So I'll see you in a few minutes when the treatment's over. Okay. Whilst the treatment's going on, you'll hear various clicks and whirs from the machine. Don't worry about those. Okay. And there's also a continuous bleeping noise, which is the gamma monitor. Right, okay. All right, yeah. at the end of 12 minutes, we'll come back. Okay. Last out. Well, the radiation doesn't just stop inside Stella when she's having her treatment with the radioisotope. And if the staff who were treating her were to remain in the room, they would all get some radiation, even though it would be a small dose. Now, whilst it's reasonable for Stella to receive some of that radiation because she has a cancer, which is a very serious risk to her, it is not reasonable for people who do not have cancer to be exposed to radiation. So are you happy with the films, Dr Blake? Yes, I think that now we've done the insertion, we can see on these films that the tube is nicely within the uterus and that the applicators are at the top of the vagina. Uh, with the correct positioning, we can go ahead with the treatment now. Ready to switch on? Mm-hmm. The radioactive source is put into these tubes by the machine in order to deliver the radiation in a concentrated form around this area here, which is where the cervix is sitting. And so that is the area that gets the biggest radiation dose and therefore we're able to cure the cancer. Well, when we were talking about the risks and benefits with Stella, we had to cover a whole range of side effects that can occur with radiation. Side effects to the normal tissues in her pelvis, such as her bladder and her, her rectum. But we also had to talk to her about her fertility as well. Another tissue in the pelvis is the ovary, and radiation will have an effect on that also. The risk of having the treatment was that I knew from the beginning that it would leave me infertile. And so obviously, even though I'm recently married and I'm still quite young, I won't be able to have any children of my own. However, I would like to add to that that had the cancer not been discovered, had I gone on to have some children with my husband, I may have left them with no mother. And so from that point of view, I have to say that it's better the way things have turned out. I'm still here. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I have a nice life with my husband. And I, I don't think I can say much more, really. Free online programme notes are available at channel4.com forward slash learning containing useful background information. To order the series on video priced at £14.90.